In this video, we're learning about cell structures and functions. So we'll cover what cells are, how the cell membrane controls what enters and leaves the cell, the subcellular structures contained within cells and in their functions too, and finally the differences between animal and plant cells. Let's start with what cells are. You can think of cells as the basic building blocks of life. And what we mean by this is that they're the smallest unit of life that can replicate independently. So if we took an animal or a plant cell, they could divide into two cells, then into four cells, and so on. These cells are all combined together to make up an organism. To see what I mean, imagine we took a human and looked at him closely under a microscope. We'd see that he's made up of cells, so the skin contains skin cells, the blood contains blood cells, and so on. Overall, we've got loads of different types of cells, and it's estimated that an adult contains over 40 trillion cells altogether. Next, let's look at how the cell membrane controls what enters and leaves the cell. A key feature of all cells is that they are surrounded by a cell membrane. Importantly though, these membranes are selectively permeable, and the selective permeability is crucial for keeping the cell healthy. It helps the cell in a few different ways. It allows nutrients like glucose and oxygen to enter the cell, whilst keeping harmful substances out of it. It also controls the removal of waste products, like carbon dioxide. And without the membrane, essential materials could leak out when the cell needs them. Now, the membrane can do all of this because it's made up of special molecules that can recognize different substances. Some substances need special channels or transporters in order to cross the membrane, whilst others can pass through easily and some others are completely blocked from crossing. This selective permeability means the cell can maintain the right internal environment to function properly, even when the conditions outside of the cell change. Next, we need to look at the actual structure of cells, so we'll start by comparing an animal cell and a plant cell side by side in order to highlight their similarities and differences. Now, to understand cell structure, we need to look at the different parts that make up the cell, and these are known as subcellular structures, or sometimes organelles. Firstly, both cells are surrounded by cell membranes that control which substances can pass in and out of the cell. For example, they'll let some chemicals through the membrane, but not others. Both types also have a nucleus, which contains the genetic material or DNA of the cell, so it effectively controls the activities of the cell as well. They're also both filled with a gel-like substance called cytoplasm. This is what all the other subcellular structures sit in, and is also where chemical reactions take place. You can basically think of it like water filling a water balloon, but the consistency is closer to jelly. Next, they also have a lot of mitochondria, whose job is to provide the cells with the energy that they need to function. Basically, they break down sugars, like glucose, in a process called aerobic respiration, which releases energy that the cell can use. And finally, both cell types also contain loads of ribosomes, which are the site of protein synthesis, which just means it's where proteins are made. Now, all of these subcellular structures that we've just mentioned are common to both animal and plant cells, but importantly, plant cells also have a few extra structures. For one, they have a rigid cell wall around the entire cell, made up of a material called cellulose. And because cellulose is really strong, the cell wall can provide support and structure to the cell which is really important, because if too much water entered the cell, it would otherwise burst. Next, a lot of the cell is often taken up with this thing called a permanent vacuole. You can think of this as a big sac that contains cell sap, which is basically a mixture of sugars, salts, and water the cell can use when it needs to. And finally, they also have chloroplasts, which are where photosynthesis happens. Basically, photosynthesis is the process by which plants use energy from the sun to make sugars like glucose. And to help with this, chloroplasts contain a green substance called chlorophyll, which absorbs the light needed for photosynthesis. And it's this chlorophyll substance that makes plants' leaves green. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam-style questions, and past papers and we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here, 
or browse our playlist here on YouTube.